What is going on, you guys? Alex Chasen back here with a brand new video. And the Boston Celtics take a commanding 2 0 lead after their 105 to 98 victory over the Mavericks last night. Is it over for Dallas? Yes, it's over for Dallas. No, I'm kidding. It's all obviously not over for the Mavericks, but it's definitely nearing life support because the way the Boston Celtics won this game, it should put fear, incite fear, into the Mavericks. Boston could not make a three to save their life most of this game. They were 10 for 39, 25%. In the first quarter, they almost didn't make a three at all but until Al Horford made a three with about five seconds left in the first quarter. I was hearing on the broadcast, if Al Horford didn't make that three, it would have been their first quarter this entire season without a three. That's how bad they were behind the arc. And that's a testament to the Mavericks defense. This entire playoffs, the Mavericks defense has been overachieving. In the regular season, they were about a you know middle-of-the-road defense. Coming into these playoffs, they became a top you know five, six defense. And they've continued that. Even in the last game, they continued it pretty well as well. But in game two, they were really clamping down that three-point line, really pressuring guys, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, really pressuring overall that three-point line, forcing guys to go inside, forcing guys to make other plays, different reads. And it was working, keeping this game close, keeping the Mavericks in the lead for a good, good bit of this game. But the difference is Boston has too many options. Drew Holiday, 26 points. 11 rebounds, 3 assists, 11 for 14 from the field, 2 of 4 from 3. Zero turnovers, by the way. Drew Holiday played a flawless game. It was an amazing game. And I love Marcus Smart, but this just shows the difference in levels here between Marcus Smart and Drew Holiday. Of course, they weren't traded for each other. It was Smart for Chris Dops, but positionally... It shows the levels of difference here. Drew Holiday and Marcus Smart, they're comparable on defense. Of course, Smart has that deep, deep boy. Drew doesn't. But when it comes to offense and just overall play, Drew Holiday is levels better than Marcus Smart. In post game last night, Drew Holiday, he was getting asked, why aren't you considered the third star of this team? Or why, why aren't you not considered one of the main stars of this team? He's like, no, that's obviously Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. I'm just a complimentary piece. You would never, and again, I love Marcus Smart, you would never hear that from Marcus Smart. He would never sell himself to be just a complimentary piece. He wanted those last second shots like Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum. He wanted that recognition. And that's part of the reason, not but nearly the full reason, but that's part of the reason why Boston has never gotten over the hump. He's gone, you fill that void in with Drew Holiday, and this team is completely different. Last night, Drew Holiday showed he is that true complimentary piece that will do whatever it is that needs to be done to win. Last night, he needed to be that star. Jason Tatum couldn't find the three. He was getting doubled. He was getting tripled at times. And when he was driving to the rack, he was highly contested, couldn't really find his way there as well. Drew Holiday continued doing what needed to be done in his role. Last night, it was to be one of the bigger stars on the team. He did that, and they won this game because of him. Obviously, not just because of him, but he was one of the leading factors here. And it goes to what I said a couple seconds ago. This team has too many options. Jalen Brown had another good game, 21 points, 8 for 15 from the field. Jason Tatum, again, he struggled, but he got his 18 points, but he was 6 for 22 from the field with also three turnovers. That's also not great as well. But what I do want to talk about with Jason Tatum, and I feel like a broken record here, but it's continuously needs to be talked about because it continuously comes up. Teams are doubling Jason Tatum. Last night, I saw the Mavericks triple Jason Tatum at, at times. He also was driving to the rack, getting smothered by the Maverick defenders down low in the paint. Gafford, Lively, PJ, Derek Jones Jr., whatever it was, he was getting smothered. They're playing really good overall defense on Jason Tatum. I think we've learned Jason Tatum is a fantastic one-on-one -on -one player, but as soon as you apply other pressure to him, he hasn't quite unlocked that level in his game yet. But what he has unlocked is his ability to impact the game everywhere else. 12 assists and 9 rebounds. And that's what separates the superstars from the stars and then just the other guys in this league. Jason Tatum is a superstar. He may not be the superstar the media wants him to be, dropping 35 points, you know, eight rebounds, six assists, but he is a superstar in this league for that very thing right there. He got his points, struggled to shoot, but he impacted the game everywhere. 
I think that's more of a superstar than anything else. Just continually to impact the game when you need when you need him to. And he did that. So I'm going to fight for Jason Tatum. I get on him a lot in his shooting struggles and because I, I want him to be that 35-point-per-game guy. I want him to be that in the biggest moments. That's just not his game, at least right now while he's struggling to shoot. He's had those moments, but it's not right now. In this version of Jason Tatum, I think this is the version of Jason Tatum that will ultimately get him a championship. So I know I rambled on, but I had to get it out. But we'll continue. Just the overall play from this starting five for the Boston Celtics. They got a little bit of help off the bench. Obviously, Porzingis with his 12 points, but they don't go too deep onto the bench like the Mavericks do. They dig a little bit deeper. They really stick to their starting five. Then KP, Hauser, and Pritchard for Boston. And Porzingis seems to get a little hurt at the end of the game. He said it was nothing. He said he's fine. We'll see what happens in game three. But just this starting five by the Boston Celtics, it's almost unbeatable. They're on a nine-game winning streak in the playoffs. That very rarely happens. So we talked about the winner. Let's cross over to the loser here in the Dallas Mavericks. And what is going wrong for them? Well, in short, this team is only going to go as far as Luka and Kyrie can take them. Luka had a flawless game last night. He had 32 points, a triple-double, 32-11-11. and 11. That's a flawless game. He figured out how to get assists because in game one, he had one assist. That is almost unheard of for someone like Luka Doncic. Last night, he found the passing lanes. He found more opportunities to get assists. He had a very, very good game. But Kyrie, his shooting struggles continue. 16 points, 7 for 18 from the field, 0 of 3 from 3. If I'm not mistaken, he was 0 for 5 in game one. So he's 0 for 8 in this finals. Kyrie Irving, that's atrocious. He's saying the Boston crowd's not getting in his head. I don't know if I believe that. I think he'll be better in game three. But I also said that in my last video that I think he'll be better in game two, and he wasn't. If Kyrie Irving performed last night, they might have won this ball game. They lost by seven. Imagine if Kyrie got 23, 25 points. I know it doesn't exactly equal out to a win, obviously, because a lot of different factors can go on in a game, but it would have helped. So imagine if Kyrie Irving has been playing like Kyrie Irving these games would be maybe a little bit different. Maybe they'd be the same outcome. I don't know. But Kyrie Irving and Luka both need to be playing fantastic to beat the Boston Celtics. I think we all knew that. The media was really harping on how the Dallas Mavericks are not the underdogs in this series and how Boston was the underdogs. I saw so many betters picking Dallas because of Luka and Kyrie. But I think they forgot of how dominant that whole starting five plus their sixth and seventh men on Boston are. Because it's, they're only going to go as far as Luka and Kai can take them. And Kyrie's not performing and we're seeing what's happening. Because P.J. Washington isn't going to bring you a championship. Derek Jones Jr. is not going to bring you a championship. Josh Green's not. Jaden Hardy's not. Dante Exum sure is not going to bring you a championship. They're complementary pieces. But it's as far as Luka and Kyrie can take them. Luka's playing great. He figured out what was wrong in game one, and he fixed that in game two, getting his 11 assists versus one assist in game one. Kyrie continues to struggle. So that's definitely something to look at going into their homestand in Dallas if he'll pick that up. Maybe it was the crowd. Maybe he was rattled. He's just not going to say it. Maybe that he'll fix it. We'll see. But I do expect if both Kyrie and Luka play fantastic, they probably would win a game because that's how good they are, and they keep them in ball games. There's people that picked Dallas in six, Dallas in seven, and I'm not denying that's possible. Probably not six, but seven's possible. But it's as far as Luka and Kyrie can take them. And if you have guys on the other end, like Derek White and Drew Holiday, who know or can slow down, not Luka, because Luka's just invincible, but can slow down Kyrie Irving like they have been, slowing down everyone else like they relatively have been, it's reps. This series is not going more than five games if this continues. I think they'll grab a game at home because inevitably the role players and inevitably Kyrie Irving will play better in sleeping in their own beds and just being in their home environment. No rowdy fans yelling at them, at least not as many. Inevitably, they're probably going to win one at home, whether that's game three or game four. But I just do not see this series at this point. Coming into the series, I had different thoughts. I thought the lob threat was going to be a lot stronger. Last night, they did fix that a little bit with Gafford getting 13 points. Lively wasn't really good at all. He was kind of the game one Lively where didn't really get much play, didn't really impact the game in any way. But Gafford definitely dominated the paint a lot more than in game one. So they figured out a little bit of something there, but not enough to dominate over Boston. Because Porzingis' rim protection was still amazing. Al Horford has still been playing great defense for being 38 damn years old. Let's not forget that. Get him a ring. It's not over for Dallas, but 
the way this team is comprised, Dallas just can't match up with that. Unless Kyrie and both Luka go nuclear, but we haven't seen that yet. So we'll see what happens in game three. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. I'll be back very soon. Like always, peace out.